you're saying. It's true. I realize now that a show is the art of the unknown. Even if you have the same actors performing on the same stage, the performance will be slightly different every time. Those subtle differences are what make each performance special. Uh, okay. One last request. Traveler, you can enter the preprints, yes? The truth is that my sets are composed entirely of preprints. First, I use materials to make the objects. Then I take those objects and turn them into the preprint. Now, of course, preprints are really meant for making objects to furnish the domain. So using objects to create preprints is, strictly speaking, the reverse of what this is intended for. But Idea said that if this is what I really want to do, she's not going to stand in my way. Ah, so that's what you meant earlier. Okay, well, what do you need us to do? I'd like the Traveler to go into the preprint set and help move props around during the performance. The reason is... Um... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, Paimon gets it now. If you're busy directing, moving the props, and operating all the mechanisms, you never get the chance to watch the show. Yes. I know that I'm no master playwright, but still. Even if it really is a half-baked script, with shoddy writing and moments of sheer ridiculousness, I'd still like to see it for myself. Just once. Hard to turn a guy down after a speech like that. Thank you. Genuinely, I'm so grateful. I'll go and inform the others. Then, as soon as you're ready, the show can begin. There are leaves around, and I know just the tune to accompany them, if you wish to hear it. Ago, there was a great thief. He lived in a land where the light did not shine, where all suffered in the darkness. Uh, people call me. Sorry, Kaya. Directly into the microphone, please. Otherwise, your voice'll, you know. Okay. <clears throat> they call me the Dagger Bandit, but no one sees that I rob the rich and give to the poor. Here in the dark. Evildoers run rampant in the shadows, while the good, honest folk stumble blindly on, just trying to find a way through. As the bandit brooded, suddenly the world was inexplicably changed as a single star appeared on the horizon and flew across the sky. Traveler, stomp on that movement mechanism in front of you. Light, a brief flash, yet enough to illuminate the world. If I can find the source of that light, I can shine it into the darkness, and the people will suffer in blindness no longer.
Without a moment to spare, he set off to follow the star's course. All the while, the star kept moving through the sky. Um, Traveler, the star kept moving through the sky. Looks like I have to go through the desert. This could get dangerous. If everything he'd heard was to be believed, the desert ahead was a no-man's land filled with horrors. Worse still, the star had landed in the most difficult to reach location, surrounded by sheer cliffs. But he was determined to press onward. I've come this far, and I'm not about to turn back now. The Dagger Bandit trekked deep into the desert wasteland. Yet when he finally arrived at his destination, he found not a fallen star, but a young girl, dressed in white. How strange. I'm positive this is where the star landed. Young lady, do you know where the light has gone? The girl replied, Traveler from afar, the light you seek is only a bottled flame. But the flame has now died, and its light is long gone. A uh, bottled flame? Yes, it was a gift from another. And so, the girl began to tell the story of how the bottle came into her possession. The girl hailed from a kingdom that sat atop the waterfalls. But when the reigning dynasty fell and a new one seized power, she and her people fled for their lives. A thick fog began to fill the air as she made her way through the forest, and dense thickets tried to block her path. There is a mechanism down there that you can press to retract the thicket board below the stage. With scratches covering her arms and legs, the girl pressed through the pain and made her way forward. The road ahead was arduous, but she was determined to press onward. I've come this far, and I'm not about to turn back now. But, just as she was drawing near her destination, a huge stretch of thorns and brambles suddenly came into view. Despair set in and began to weigh on her heart. If only someone could help me, I would give anything in return. The girl's heartfelt wish in her moment of desperation did not go unheard. Wait, wait, wait! There's no mechanism for the final thicket! Ugh, I must have forgotten to check those boards. According to the story, those thickets should be gone from the stage now, right? Yes, total oversight on my part. Ugh, what a pain. I can help! Traveler! Cat! Ah, it's a jumpy dumpty! The girl's heartfelt wish did not go unheard, for a Jumpy Dumpty, who was passing by, 
helped to clear a path for her. Oh, thank you, Jumpy Dumpty. And so the girl continued her journey deeper into the forest. But what she found there was not a lamp, but a mage glowing with fire. So, just to clarify, it was supposed to be the mage who helped burn a path through the thicket. <laughs> Save it for the end, man! The mage took pity on the girl and handed her a bottle. Then, the mage began to tell the story of how the bottle came into her possession. The fiery mage had an adventurous spirit and enjoyed taking long journeys. On one such journey, while taking rest in an oasis, she found a beautiful bottle by a crescent-shaped lake. Klee, quick, get in the light. Coming! She was an extraordinary mage with the power to grant people their wishes. She turned the bottle into a thing of equally extraordinary power. But the only place that it could make wishes come true was inside of the bottle. Oh, me! Oh, my! Look at this wonderful bottle of mine! It could make a fine toy. But better still, a sojourner's home. The fiery mage blew into the bottle, allowing it to grant one single wish outside its glass walls. Blow into it? Whew. Whoa, it lit up! A flame was kindled within the bottle, and it began to glow a fiery red, just like the mage herself. After the mage finished telling her story, she disappeared, leaving only the bottle behind. A magic bottle that can grant wishes. And I wish to leave this place and go somewhere where no one will ever find me again. And then? The bottle seemed to softly inquire. I don't know. The flame in the bottle faded as the girl's single wish was granted. And she found herself in the middle of the desert, far away where no one could ever find her. When the Dagger Bandit listened to her story, he sighed in disappointment that the flame with the power to grant wishes outside of the bottle had already died. But this doesn't make sense. If it truly granted my wish, then nobody should have been able to find me here. Maybe they shouldn't. The desert is difficult and dangerous to navigate, but I was determined to make it, no matter what. Then take this bottle with you for your trouble. It may be able to grant you your wish, though sadly, only within the confines of the bottle itself. All I wish for is light. Honoring the bandit's request, the girl wished for light inside the bottle. And sure enough, it lit up. They found that while the light was only generated within, it could nonetheless shine through the glass and reach anywhere in the outside world. Even though it doesn't burn as brilliantly as the light that shone before, this is still an extraordinary light. What will you do after I take the bottle? Well, then maybe you should come back with me. With no reason to refuse, the girl accompanied the Dagger Bandit back to the land where the light did not shine. They brought light to that place, and the darkness was dispersed. And they lived happily ever after. Well...